96.7 FM WORX. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. 906 AM here on Telegraph Hill where it is 43 degrees the first Tuesday here in the month of November and that means it's time once again for Veterans Talk. AJ Bramer here in studio with the State District Service Officer Joe DeVito once again joined us for the program. Joe DeVito thank you for coming back to Veterans Talk where we have a new sponsor we'd like to thank. We do. Good morning AJ. Thanks for having me once again. Um, yeah we do have a new sponsor for the show so Farmers Bank of Milton has uh, jumped in and sponsored the show uh, for the rest of the year and hopefully for years to come. And uh, also joining us for this month's program, we have Faith Weir, the Jefferson County Veteran Services Officer. We've, uh, we have we teased the appearance of uh, Faith coming on this month's program last month. We did. And so we're definitely excited to have Faith on the program. Faith, th thank you so much. You're welcome. Good morning. And uh, we definitely are excited to have a Joe on the program, as well as uh, Joe's successor with the uh, Veteran Absolutely. Service Program. I think it's been uh, a month or two now, close to two months, I think. A couple months you've been on? Yep. And, yep. Uh, two months. Yeah, last month we decided uh, Faith was still swimming in a sea of, of this is, there's a lot going on down here, so we let, put it off till this month, but I can, I can let everybody out there know, um, like we always say, if you're a veteran, the relative of a veteran, the friend of a veteran, or the dependent of a veteran, stop by the office or give Faith a call, 812-265-3600. Mm -hmm. um, there are benefits out there, federal, state, and others. So um, give her a call, get an appointment, come down, bring your DD-214, and uh, see what's available. That's what, that's what the office is there for, to help manage benefits and help disseminate any information we can to our area veterans. So uh, Faith is up and running, and she's doing an awesome job. Um, She's a great, she's learned everything I've given her. She's uh, jumped right on board. She's almost <laughs> done with her, I think she's done with her trip training. She's got her accreditation almost. training. So yes. we'll be yeah. getting her accredited shortly and she's up and running. So it's great to have her on board. Now, Faith, I know you and I were talking a little bit before the program started. Uh, you said it's been a very busy time in your office. Very which, busy. you know, is, mm -hmm. that ultimately that's a good thing though. That is a good thing. Um, we had... You know, I had scheduled appointments yesterday, but we also had 10 walk-ins. So it's our, the office has been very busy, and uh, I've met a lot of great people, and um, I'm just very blessed and very humbled to be able to, you know, serve our county and serve our veterans. So, you know, as we we talk about that office all the time, just you know, it's as simple as making a phone call and absolutely. learn a lot of information that can go a long way. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a great deal for. Uh, for anybody to come in, and um, it's, I'm happy to say Faith is open all week now. Um, what what exactly are your hours? Let everybody know your office We're hours. open Monday through Friday, uh, 9 to 4, and I usually take lunch between 12 and 1, but um, we're there. So, there, doors open. I, I know that that was you know a goal of yours when you were in the office, Joe, was getting it so the office would be open all, all, all the it, week long. It was, and I'd like to say thank you to the Jefferson County Commissioners. Um, they were able to help work with the transition of the new person coming in to uh, hire Faith and then get, the, get more hours for her and uh, help her out in that regard. And, and another thing I'm real happy to say is uh, Sue Goins, a previous guest of ours, uh, yeah. who is helping me out at the office, sometimes paid, sometimes volunteer. She started as a volunteer, is now going to be part of the permanent staff. She's staying on and Mondays, I believe, right? Mondays, and then if there's a day that I've got to be out of the office, Sue will come in and help out and take over. She's awesome. She's, she's, she's so good with people, and she really puts people at ease, and yeah, she's been a huge help. That's certainly, yeah, having good staff around you, that goes a long way as absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And definitely. it's important work down at that office, so got to have good people helping out. Absolutely, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to get, uh, I'm going to do some Vetrospect training with Sue and get her working on our database so uh, she can really start helping Faith out even with some deeper stuff at the office, and uh, we're just going to keep things rolling. And it's one of the things I'm so happy about with my job is, uh, uh, I'd, I'd love to teach. I love to let people know how to do things and explain things, and that's what I get to do is train. And and uh, I, I just couldn't be, you know, it was a little sad to leave the office. Uh, I built a lot of relationships, got to know a lot of veterans and families, and but I, I, I can't say how happy I am to leave it in, in Faith's hands. And, and she's there and Sue's there, and I know things are going to move on and probably even get better. 
Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, off to a great start so far, I'd say, Faith. Thank so, you. But um, as we talk about the Veterans Service Office, just for folks out there, since we've been talking last couple times about Joe's office, just for folks out there that don't know about the Veterans Service Office, some of the duties down there that you have as the Veterans Service Officer. So we, um, I, there's there's so many different things, and, and this is a job where I'm constantly learning. Um, but, you know, you come in and you've got a vet that comes in and, Hey, I don't. I can't find my DD-214. You know, we can help you order your DD-214. Or, hey, you know, I don't have my service records. We can help you with that. You know, we file claims. Um, get help veterans get set up with VA benefits, health benefits. Get them enrolled in VA, which is really important in maintaining your status with the VA. Um, there's just there's so many different things that the office offers, and I've had quite a few veterans come in saying, you know, I, I never even knew this office existed or that these services were available to us and, you know, that's what we're there for, so. No, and I mean, we talk about that all the time so often, you know, not only the veterans, but I think also a lot of times, you know, widows of veterans or dependents, yep. they don't know that there is a service or a sort of benefit out there for them that, you know, you well, guys are able to put them in touch with absolutely not just the you know I mean, even the veterans themselves they'll they'll bring a lot of oftentimes the the you know the older ones they'll bring their wives in which is awesome and um you know and so it's good for their wives to know the benefits that are out there as well and it it kind of sets uh, the veterans at ease knowing that you know when they do pass that their their families will be taken care of so yeah, it's, it's, and we just had our first uh, district state service officer meeting up in Indianapolis. So me and my other compadres throughout the state got together, and, and that was one of the things we talked about was, um, you know, we th most of the other guys are, are and gals are previous service officers as well, and this this continuing effort and, and through all the counties in the state where um, everybody runs into that, veteran who comes in and says, wow, I never even knew this office was here. So it's mm -hmm. it's a statewide thing and, and things like this radio show um, and outreach events like this are, are part of uh, what we want to do to get that word out. And part of my new job and, and my, my other district service officers are to work our counties and to get out and do outreach and let people know they're here. And that's why it's so important for everybody out there listening right now. If, if you're a veteran, the dependent of a veteran, a friend, cousin, relative of a veteran you, you know a guy at work who you think is a veteran Absolutely. give him the give him the phone number let him know where the office is at um 812-265-3600 and uh give a call um you can pop in if you like but i bet your faith would love it if you called real quick and made an appointment especially <laughs> if you have a few things to talk about and then she can prep you her or sue can tell you about what to bring um and that'll kind of get things moving a little quicker but you just don't know what's out there and uh it's worth a trip to come in and find out what you do or don't qualify for. Uh, Joe, as we meet here the first Tuesday in the month of November, since it's that first Tuesday, we have a very important day coming up this weekend. We sure do. Sure do. Veterans Day is coming up, and uh, it's pretty exciting. There's a lot of events going on. Um, pretty much everywhere. We've got a few events in town that we, we, we'll talk about a little bit today and by no means am I going to cover all the events. I, I don't get a list so we've got our local media, we got our uh, newspaper, we got you guys. Um, for people if you want to know what's going on get out there and look around. And there um, is, there's quite a bit going on. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. I know that uh, there's the uh, event up at the high school. That's uh, an annual event that they do. They have a breakfast, I think it's at 8 in the morning. That, no, it actually starts at 7. Breakfast is at 7. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and the program might start at 8. So they have a eight. Veterans Day program up eight. there. Uh, Shaw has a program as well. Um, I think theirs is at 8 as well. Um, and call for the details. If, if sure. anybody's wondering, I'm not, I'm not going to hit the exact details. But I do know uh, Ponderosa has their dinner. Uh, I believe they're Friday night, yep, from 4 to 8 in the afternoon, so veterans can go up there and get a free dinner at Ponderosa. Um, from the, what I've seen in the parking lot in the previous years, I'd say get there early. It seems yeah. like it, it's, a, it's a good crowd. I know our uh, VFW has a luncheon going on as well from 11 a.m. Uh, up the up VFW post and the American Legion. They're going to do a different day, I think, because there's so much going on on Friday. Yeah, the American Legion is doing theirs on Monday. Monday. 13th. All right, so you can go up there and probably get a dinner or lunch or give, give down to the post nine to call if you want to find out more details about what they got going on as well. Um, also, this year, um, they're going to be ho having the parade yes. on the river again. So mm -hmm. I believe that's getting put on um, 
by Narcy Burris down there with the uh, senior center. Yeah. And um, I, I know that the parade starts at 3, and it's on the riverfront. And uh, I'm not sure where it starts. I know it ends at the Brown Gym. I'm, I believe it starts at the courthouse. All right. That's the plan. All right. Sounds great. So, and I know that at uh, after the parade, there's a program at the Brown Gym as well. There's yeah. a dinner and some... Uh, the community concert band will be playing that night, I know. Absolutely. And... and I think we have a, an announcement from the Jefferson County Veterans Council on that night as well. Um, um, amongst the things we talked about before with the Jefferson County Veterans Council, which, which Faith is now on board with us and attending the meetings and a member as well, we have a different projects that we do throughout the years as well as running the DAV van. And um, one of the projects that this year uh, really spearheaded with Robin Henderson and some other groups in town was uh, uh, our banner program. Yes. And, and uh, we'll talk more about that as time comes, but they did have a contest for the banners to for the design, and I know Faith was a judge on that, and, and they have a winner. A winner was chosen, and um, I know that that's going to be announced this week, and then um, I believe that there was a $250 prize for that, yeah, and so that, that will be um, presented to the winner um, after the, the parade. I know a lot of people, you know, see the, we got quite a few banners downtown advertising for different events, but this is just a really cool initiative, just the opportunity to honor honor our veterans in this community in a really cool way. People that come to town will be able to see, you know, the people that have made all that's available in the city of Madison and Jefferson County possible with their service. It sure is. It's a great it's a great thing for the community to do. Other other communities have done it, and it seems like it's a, a popular program. Um, and I know we had the, the design contest for the banners, which is a great way to get the word out yeah. and a great way for some community involvement. I, I think Robin may have come yeah. up with that. Robin Henderson has really grabbed the banner thing yeah. and ran with it. So he's, he's just outstanding when he gets out there and gets, gets his mind on something. And he's, he's been, he was so essential with the memorial on the courthouse. Um, and he's really jumping on board with this one as well. And I know, I don't know, it was, an, it was anonymous judging for the banner contest or for the design contest. So, but I think you said it was number 40 who won. So was there over 40 entries or? There were. That's there were. amazing. Yeah, there That's were quite a few to go through. Yeah, it was it was a tough choice, but um, we all agreed on the one design, and um, I hope we did our little community proud. I'm sure so, you did. Yeah. Absolutely. It's yeah. very exciting. That's it was. And it, I know was it was a very cool thing to do. Got a lot of questions about that. Just uh, people really excited to see when the banners get put up. Yeah. That'll be a, a really cool day. I know another thing that kind of connected to the event this Saturday at the Brown Gym, uh, and also another way we're honoring veterans locally, the uh, the Christmas tree that will be placed in the courthouse yard. That's going to be coming up. So, Yeah, that's that's always a great event. And, Matt, and uh, I know, uh, I'm not sure, do you know when it's going up? I'm not sure when it's going up, but I know that uh, just from the information that Narcy sent me about the, uh, the parade and the event this Saturday, um, people can um, get more information on the ornaments for um getting, getting signed up to have have their veterans ornament on the tree awesome so definitely uh definitely check with narcy this saturday absolutely and i'm sure plenty of info at the brown gym saturday yeah. afternoon and i think it's just you know when we talk about just so many different events going on for veterans day just you know it's a really cool way but a really simple way just to say thank you to our veterans absolutely it sure is and i think i may have just said saturday afternoon i believe the parade is friday correct no, I believe the parade is Saturday. Saturday. The parade, yeah. okay. Yeah. The I, mean, I may have said Friday earlier, right. so I'm, well, the correction. Events, the events at the high schools are, right. I know are Friday, right. and then right. the, the parade, the parade and the event at Brown Gym are Saturday. The parade correct. is Saturday. Yes, very important. <laughs> Excellent. I don't I want may, anybody to go to the wrong place. I got it wrong at some point, so I want to that's make okay. sure that's corrected. Okay, great. Uh, Faith, something we skipped over when we were talking a little bit earlier with your office was the American Legion hours. So once a month, I spend half a day working out of the American Legion. Um, this month it's going to be November 16th. I'll be there from noon to four, um, and it's just another way of kind of you know reaching out to our vets who maybe don't you know don't want to come into our office for whatever reason. Um, I've also reached out to the VFW and I'm trying to get something set up in place with that for me to be able to be accessible to them as well. And going up there and spending half a day there once a month, um, just you know, veterans, you know want to come up and talk or if they need help with you know filing a claim you know 
getting a copy of their DD-214 or whatever it may be that they need, you know, um, that's what I'm here for, so. Yeah. yeah. Our, our Post 9 downtown, American Legion, their service officer is Doug Dobson, yep. and Doug's really, since he came on board as service officer a while back, has really been trying to get more involved and trying to help folks get in the right direction as yes. far as benefits and mm -hmm. I was sporadically started the program so I'm really glad Faith is sticking with the Legion hours and, and making it a more solid event and staying with it to um, be able to contact veterans out in the community so it's a great great idea and I'm glad she's doing it great way uh, definitely another great way of reaching out to our veterans absolutely yeah it's yeah. all about the outreach mm -hmm. and yeah and as Joe and know you know a main focus of our program here is you know talking about the different benefits that are available for our veterans so I knew there were a few that before we, as we come up on the end of the program there were a few you wanted to talk about absolutely I, I wanted to hit real quick on um, um, veteran Vietnam veterans and our presumptive disorders with the federal VA um, it, it's a, a topic that is uh, the benefits for for these particular veterans are are really pertinent right now um, with the age and and other things involved with those guys so I really want to make sure people understand that uh, you know we have service connected disabilities that you can file with the VA and that's an injury a disability disease or disorder that you have that was caused by your military service when you file that claim you have to kind of show the VA that it was caused by your military service um, for guys who served in Vietnam and other exposures in service the VA has what they call presumptive disorders and what that means is if you have the duty in the military it, that coincides with that and then you later in life con contract that disability disease or disorder it's presumed caused by your service so it's pretty much a gimme kind of claim for a veteran and with our Vietnam veterans there's an an unfortunate two-page list mm -hmm. of, of disorders and a page and a half of it are cancers. Yep. Um, some of the ones we see a lot uh, claims-wise throughout the state are prostate cancer, uh, lung cancer, type 2 diabetes, ischemic heart disease, mm -hmm. and these are things that like I said if they served in Vietnam, boots on the ground, and they later co contract this disease or disorder, they can file a claim and that's a monetary compensation as well as VA health care and other benefits that go with it. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. Um, and the other thing I wanted to just touch on real quick is for the widow of one of those veterans, um, if that veteran had had a service-connected disability with one of those conditions and that was a cause of the veteran's death or a contributing factor, there's a really great benefit available to that widow. Um, that's a pretty simple application. Um, the, the cause of the veteran's death is, is what qualifies her as his widow as long as she was married to him at the time that they passed and she's unremarried. Um, and so that, that's a great benefit that's available and it comes with health care and other benefits. So we really want people to know that. and. The, the, um, the thing I really want to stress is that with that particular claim, which is called the Dependency Indemnity Compensation, or a DIC claim, that's a widow's benefit, um, and it has to do with the veteran's uh, cause of death being service-connected, and a lot of it with the Agent Orange, I mean any veteran who had that claim. But one thing I want to stress is that if a veteran had never filed a claim with the VA, he had maybe served in Vietnam, come home and never had anything to do with the VA, and years later died of one of those conditions that's on the presumptive list, meaning he could have been service connected had he ever filed, she does qualify for that claim. So that's really important, I want people to know. So they don't have to have been receiving VA benefits when they died for the widow to possibly be able to find out. And that's just one of those things, again, if you know um, a relative, an aunt, mom, somebody you know that is a uh, that their husband was a Vietnam veteran, he's no longer with us, um, have her give the uh, office a call, 812-265-3600. There's benefits out there possibly for that person, so let's let's at least find out. Give Faith a call, um, get a hold of your county service officer. I know we're pretty far reaching over the airways right here, so every county has a county service officer. Mm -hmm. So you can always call downtown, Faith can get you, if you're in a different county, she can help you with that. You can go to um, in.gov forward slash DVA and you'll see uh, a link for county service officers there's a map click the county it gives you the hours the name phone number and everything for that county service office so you know everybody out there listening you know get the veterans get the dependents to the offices and, and see what's available and definitely learn a lot by just making a simple phone call <laughs> great Absolutely. Uh, faith we are the Jefferson County Veterans Service Officer as we wrap up the program is there anything else you'd like to add today <laughs> 
Nope, I'm just I think we've uh, it absolutely all. thrilled to be here. And uh, like I said, um, I'm just I'm happy that I'm here to be able to serve our veterans. And um, I'm so thankful that we have you know programs like this to get the word out. And hopefully, you know, we can get some more veterans through our door and you know get them some help and some services that they're needing. We're definitely happy to have you on the program. Thank you. Absolutely. Anything else to add, Joe? I'm just so happy that Faith is here as well. She's doing a really outstanding job. She's really fast on the uptake and she jumped right in and and do want to let everybody know she's a Navy veteran. So yes. anybody was wondering, Faith <laughs> the, and her husband's a Navy veteran. Yep. So Absolutely. Um, it's yep. wonderful to have her on board, and uh, we're doing great. And we won't hold it against her that she wasn't in the Coast Guard. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say we have a Navy veteran, we have a, a Coast Guard veteran That's as well. We're, we're two by sea. That's yes. right. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> Faith, Joe, thank you so much for joining us for the program. Thanks. Thank you. Talk with Jefferson County Veterans Service Officer Faith Weir and State District Service Officer Joe DeVito here on Veterans Talk.